Welcome everyone to the Success Elevated Podcast. As always, I am your host, Hayden Lee, and I am joined this week by a very special guest, another one of these awesome people that we met at the Elite Entrepreneurs event just a few weeks ago, Alan Underwood, who is a co-founder of Momentum Capital. Alan, thanks again for coming on the podcast today. Hayden, it's my pleasure to be with you today. Yeah, excited to to sit down and, and chat with you about some of the cool things that you talked about at your event, but also some of the cool things you've got going on um, with your career and your background. And, and I think that's kind of where we'll, we'll start today. Um, if you don't mind, um, I'd love for you to kind of introduce yourself a little bit to our audience and talk to us about who you are and, and your, your career and what's kind of led you to where you are today. Um, I'd love to kind of just turn things over to you and let you kind of uh, familiarize yourself with, with our audience a little bit. Hayden, you're courageous for turning it over to me. So we'll see if that experiment <laughs> Go works right out ahead. in favor or not. <laughs> At any point, feel free to hit mute and just shut me down. <laughs> okay, deal, deal. I'll have I'll have it ready. I'll have the button right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you should. You should. Well, I yeah, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, as as you were there kind of making that little brief introduction, I was just thinking that, you know, as I went through my career and these experiences that we'll talk about. It was all pretty unremarkable at the time. And it's really only been now looking back with some introspection to look back and be able to say, wow, I, there's some really cool things that yeah. I've been able to be a part of. Um, so that my, I guess, business journey, my entrepreneurial journey really started, um, you know, I was 19 years old and I can remember you know, I was in Ecuador and chatting with a friend there, and there were really two goals at the time that that I had. One was I wanted to get home and get married. Um, this friend had asked if I knew, ever met anybody that I thought I could marry. And there, at that point, there had been two people that I'd met that I thought were, were great candidates. And before I got home from Ecuador. One of them was married. So that made decisions a little bit easier when I got back in terms <laughs> of the choices. Um, and the second thing was, I said, I, I want to be a millionaire before the age of 40. And at that time, candidly, that's because anybody that I knew that was very wealthy was old. And I thought 40 was pretty old at the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I have a different perspective on that now. I don't think 40 is that old. You don't think 40 is old? Okay. Well, no, no, know. that's very young yeah, from where I'm standing right now. Yeah. So perspectives have changed. Um, and I had no, no clue what that meant. Um, so I, I got home and I, I had an opportunity to, to open a restaurant and, you know, it's funny that as I was working towards that, it never occurred to me that that might not get me to where I wanted to go. Now, I did have several people. Uh, when I pitched the idea to my grandpa, he let me know point blank. Uh, that'll never work. And <laughs> I just thought he didn't quite understand the concept. So we went ahead and in retrospect, so we had a a buffet style restaurant. It's two ninety nine, all you can eat pizza, and just doing the math on there, I would have had to sell a lot of pizza for a lot of years in order to realize my goal of being a millionaire. Um, but at the time, that didn't occur to me. It seemed like a good idea, and we got going, and it was a resounding success. Um, we worked a lot. Uh, it was great while my wife was there because we worked together. And once we started having kids and she wasn't in the restaurants with me, being gone for 16 or 18 hours a day was a lot less fun. Yeah. And we ended up selling those restaurants. But before selling them, we grew that company from one location to four locations that we owned and had a partnership and a fifth. So it was it was great. It was a great success. Um, I learned a ton along the way. Um, with the first few restaurants, we literally did all the work, framing, electrical, plumbing, concrete work, demolition. We built the tables. We assembled the chairs. It was very much uh, bootstrap business. Yeah. And the next opportunity came after I sold that. Um, my dad reached out to me on the day that we sold the restaurants and 
said, Hey, I, I hear that you're unemployed now. And <laughs> I thought, well, I guess that's, that's true. That, the perspective I was looking at, I was kind of celebrating being, having successfully sold a business, but he pointed out the fact that I didn't really have anything else going in my favor at that point. And he invited me to manage a car dealership for him. Um, and I learned two lessons really quick with that experience. The first one was that selling cars made a lot more money than selling pizza. Yeah. And the second one was, is that I had really enjoyed being my own boss and being an entrepreneur. And it really chafed at being told what to do and having to uh, work on someone else's schedule and uh, apply myself to what they wanted their goals and and things to be and so I started trying to figure out how I could own my own car dealership and after three or four years uh, that happened our timing was awesome we opened at the beginning of 2007 so anybody in business knows what happened near the end of that year in the beginning of 2008 is you know there was a terrible financial collapse uh, money constricted and I went from when I was working for my dad making one hundred and fifty or $200,000 a year to that. I think at the end of 2007, um, what we reported on my taxes was like $7,000. And I was Ugh. pretty sure that my family was going to be living under a bridge, that we were going to lose our house. Um, you know, really one moment that really stands out for me was... Um, uh, we were praying as a family and my oldest son who at the time was probably about six years old I remember him praying heavenly father please help my dad to sell a car today so we don't lose our house wow. and if you ever want motivation to make yeah. a sale that was it because I thought man not only are there financial implications but this kid has faith and what happens if I'm the cause of him losing that faith because I don't do everything that I can do in my power to, to sell a car today? So I did, thankfully, I was able to, was able to make that happen. And that, um, those hard times in 07 and 08 really forced us to be really lean and forced us to find alternative solutions that we wouldn't have been looking for otherwise. And those actually became the foundation of the success that we had. So from 2007 to 2020, um, we grew our sales a million dollars a year or more every year for the next 13 years. Wow. Uh, and a lot of that was based upon the lessons that we had learned during that first difficult year. We partnered with some lenders that could make some things happen for us. We operated very lean throughout that time. Um, and there was a point in there and I wish I'd written it down, but I can remember reviewing my personal financial statement and realizing I'd hit the goal. I was younger than 40. I had a million dollars of net worth. And the next thought was, well, that sure didn't change very, change very much. Yeah. <laughs> Still had to go to work every day. I, I wasn't traveling the world or buying fancy cars, which I, I thought that's what millionaires did. Um, and the other thing that I learned is I probably set my goals too low. And I, you know, now I wasn't really quite sure what the next hurdle was. Um, and that was all really great. We, we had a ton of success going through 2020, grew the business to about $16 million a year in revenue. Um, and that was, the success story and Hayden I don't know where you want to go from there if there's questions I've talked a lot and not let you say much at no. all so. no that's awesome I the 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 story and I and you know that you shared this story um during the the, the conference that we went to and I loved hearing it and I, it was so so good to have you kind of shared a little bit more in in detail because I love those conversations about some of that adversity that you had and and I think every small business owner has their adversity at some point in their in their growth right like for you it was that that situation in 2008 and for others it, maybe it's something different but i i think there are there are so many different 
ways that you can overcome that aver- adversity. Um, but it's going to happen. It, it, what I say to what, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that any small business owner is going to face a challenge or a roadblock at some point in owning a business or managing a business or being a leader in any kind of way, shape or form. And so finding a way to overcome those roadblocks is, or finding maybe the motivation to overcome the roadblocks is super, super important. You know, you talked about the moment with your son and and him praying for you and for your family. Do you feel like, and was that kind of the, the key moment then for you? And was it just a was it a motivation thing that you felt like really kind of helped you overcome the the stress and the roadblock for you? Or was there, was there anything in addition to that that you felt like really kind of helped push you guys beyond what you thought was capable or what you thought was possible, I guess? You know, at the time, the only formula that I knew for success was what my dad and my grandpa had taught me and their, what they had taught is, you show up early, you stay late, and you work harder than everybody else. Um, that was their success formula, and that's what I applied. Now, I I would add to that that um, it wasn't just my son that was praying for our success. Yeah. I, you know, I certainly was praying for the success, too. I had, a, you know, at that time, we had uh, four kids, and they were depending on me to take care of them. And that, that was a responsibility that I took very seriously. Um, and it, it was really difficult. There were a lot of moments during those first couple of years where we weren't sure if we were going to make it. And, you know, I think every entrepreneur at some point in their business is probably going to face that. Yeah. And, um, and I think now having gone through so much more difficult challenges, I think I've figured out what the, at least for me, um, what will provide resilience and grit for any future challenges. Um, but those weren't lessons that I had learned at that point. So yeah, I was just doing what I knew how to do, which I would say the biggest difference from where I am right now to where I was then was I knew what I wanted to do then, and now I know who I want to be. And those are an- those answers to those questions, what do I want to do and who do I want to be, can be very similar, but I think there's a lot of power in defining who you want to be and working towards that and allowing what you're doing to power a bigger vision than what your vision is for just what do I want to do. You know, I, I yeah. want to sell a bunch of cars. Yeah, that's I that is such a cool way to to simplify it, right? Like there there's there are two ways you can set goals in your life, right? And you 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 touched on both of them. Uh what do you want to accomplish or who do you want to be? And uh that's such a cool way to picture it, right? Is maybe instead of focusing on okay, what do we want to accomplish? Or do I how many cars do we want to sell or how much revenue do we want to make? Maybe instead of focusing so much on that, focus on who you want to be. And sometimes, or I would say most of the time, probably a lot of those other goals are going to just happen. If you focus more on who do you want to be the type of person that you want to be the relationships you want to build all of that, right? Like that's, that's such a cool realization, I guess, to have, was there um, like a particular moment that you decided to make the shift from what do I want to accomplish to who I want to be? And do you feel like, um, was it like a big aha moment or is it just, you know, is it, has it been more of a recent thing that looking back, you're like, oh, wow. Okay. Maybe I, this is something I've kind of developed over the 20, 30 years that I've been working all of this time. You know, it, was it a specific moment you feel like that you developed this or was it just a, you know, a lifetime of, of, you know, trying to grow businesses or sell cars or whatever it was? Um, well, the moment can be really easily defined. I was in a hotel in Santa Monica attending a retreat for a Angel Flight West, the aviation charity that I represent, and uh, on the phone with a good friend who had been coaching me, helping me through a, a difficult time. And we can dig into that a little bit and connect the dots. But um, what he said on that call was, you know, I think 
what you need to do is you need to really get clear on what your core values are. Mm -hmm. And I ignored the conference for most of that morning and worked through a worksheet identifying what my core values were. And that bit of clarity has helped to frame every decision that I make now, uh, what obligations I take on, what business opportunities I look at, is that for me, if if my core values are not being excited, if they're not being lit up, then it's a very easy thing to say no, because right. I know that while I might be able to do really great things, it's not going to be maybe in complete alignment with who I want to be and the ultimate goal of of what that man looks like in the future. Um, so it's helped me to avoid making some decisions and help to provide clarity in the decisions that I am making by just defining what my core values are. Oh, that's awesome. That's a great description of that. And I, and I think it, it ties in really easily, which I think we, we've got to I, I kind of talk to our audience or talk to, yeah, we can talk to our audience a little bit more about um, what is angel flight West? Because I think that's kind of the centerpiece of this whole thing, right? Is, um, you know, your the the talk that you gave at the conference, the Elite Entrepreneurs Conference that we went to, was focused on like defining your purpose, defining what those values are for you, and you found these values through a really really cool charity called Angel Flight West, right? And and it helped you kind of maybe better identify your purpose and who you want to be. Um, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, kind of let's let's dive in a little bit into how you got connected with Angel Flight West, why, what motivated you to want to, you know, become a part of this charity and how it helped kind of clarify for you what your purpose is. Yeah. Well, to do that, we're going to have to go back a little bit because yeah. I think where we left off was we're doing $16 million a year and things are great. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we had a difficult time financially in 07, 08, but personally there weren't, I wouldn't say there were a lot of challenges there other than how do we solve this financial problem? And what happened leading up to 2020 uh, was much more significant and had a lot deeper impact than any financial struggles that we had previously. And that started really in 2016. Uh, my youngest daughter was born and she was born with a serious birth defect um, that we didn't know for the first six weeks of her life if at least during that period if she was going to survive or if she wasn't going to. So she was born with a condition called gastroschisis, which is their abdomen doesn't fully close. And so when she was born, all of her intestines, fallopian tubes, um, you know, a lot of her in internal organs were outside of her body. And so that was obviously a very high risk situation. She went through several surgeries the first few weeks of her life. Um, and then she didn't sleep for two years through the night. She'd sleep maybe an hour or two at a time. And so we went from this really high stress, emotional condition to now being sleep deprived for a couple of years. And then in 2018, uh, we found out very suddenly that my wife's mother had cancer. And a week later, she passed away. Um, that was a huge shock to everyone. Um, she was my wife's best friend. They lived a mile away. We we saw them every day or, or nearly every day. Um, there was a, a very deep connected relationship there, not just between my wife and her mom, but also with me. And then 13 months after that, her dad passed away from cancer. And the events surrounding that were really personally traumatic. And I, I don't think I need to go into that too much, but um, the circumstances of his death were very distressing for me personally. And then 13 months after that, in October of 2020, my dad had a massive stroke and passed away. So in the space of going from um, 
the end of July uh, or the end of yeah, July, August 2018 to October 2020, we so in a period of two years, we lost three parents. And that was in the middle of COVID. So the world was kind of crazy anyway. Um, yeah. And the the grief and trauma from those events uh, really wrecked me. And um, I was not able to function. And so uh, we ended up selling the businesses primarily because I knew that I wasn't capable of running them in my current mental state. And if I didn't get help, that we would go from a very bad and difficult place to a uh, really, really bad and difficult place. I don't, you know, I can, there are probably business owners right now. In fact, I'm confident there are business owners right now or investors in the current climate with high interest rates and some difficult market conditions that are going through very difficult challenges. And I know there are going to be people listening who have lost loved ones. Prior to these experiences, I thought depression was a made up thing that, yeah. I didn't have really any understanding or compassion for anxiety or depression. I really was just like, uh, Hey, get out of bed and go to work. Having experienced both of those things very deeply, I recognized that, you know, there were serious injuries done to my mind that I needed to heal from. And um, so we sold the businesses and commenced a, journey which really there are still chapters being written uh in that healing journey um but the next couple of years all of uh 2021 and 2022 for me were very focused uh on regaining mental emotional strength and health um and where angel flight connects into that is um there's, I had always wanted to fly airplanes and in the middle of my worst season, um, I had the thought that I, I should go and try and fly airplanes. Uh, that was a big ask for my wife. Uh, her, <laughs> her, her uncle had been killed in a small plane crash. So now on the back of losing her mom, losing her dad, losing her father-in-law, her husband, who's dealing with some difficult emotional challenges, yeah. wants to go fly an airplane. Um, she supported me in doing that. Um, and from the very first flight that I had, um, it was life-changing. I, I felt like the challenges that I were facing stayed on the ground and um, really my, my spirit soared yeah. with the airplane. And so I dedicated just about every single day to that new pursuit and went from never having flown an airplane to being a commercially rated pilot very quickly. And then uh, in that process, I thought there's got to be some other people that I can help with this newfound skill. So I started Googling uh, airplane charities or aviation charities. And that's where I found Angel Flight West. And um, Angel Flight West does free flights for people in need of medical care far from home. We do free flights for active duty military personnel and for veterans. We do free flights for people who are victims of domestic violence and abuse. We fly relief missions for free in support of other aviation charities, so blood and tissue donations. Uh, we fly family members or friends of those who are receiving care far from home so that that person can have a loved one with them in the hospital or wherever they're receiving care. And my involvement in that organization has been life-changing um, as you get somebody in the plane who's going through what could be the most difficult situation of their life. And now I have the opportunity to provide some hope to get them the healing that they need uh, is just such a, a great blessing and has been one of the greatest service experiences of my life. Oh, 
it's such a cool story that that led you to that point and and i I love kind of getting into the psychology of it all. Cause I think there's something there that I think yeah. is important for people to, to take a look at, but I, I want to kind of get your perspective. Do you, was there, a, um, were you kind of, you know, when you were dealing with some of this anxiety and this depression and obviously losing like these family members, like it's incredibly difficult Were you, was there some points where you were kind of throwing some things at the wall to see what would stick in a way that you were like, I've got to try something to get out of bed in the morning, you know, like, or was it just immediately you knew that flying and then eventually angel flight West, this was the thing that was going to get you out of bed. Or did, was it, you were trying a bunch of different things and this just happened to be the one that you resonated with the most, or was it just from the get go? You were like, yep, this is what I want to do. This is what I got to do to, to help motivate myself. Was it immediate or were you kind of trying a bunch of different things to, to get out of bed and to feel motivated. Yeah. Well, the answer, it was both. Okay. Um, I, I had been trying everything that I could think of everything yeah. that I could read. Um, I was listening to podcasts. I was reading books. I'd gone and uh, was working with a grief counselor. Um, I'd started practicing meditation, which I had never done before yeah. in my life. Uh, it was, doing yoga I was anything that I could do to try and improve my mental state because I knew that it was it was not headed in the right direction so um, I had reworked morning habits I had written um, affirmations like there were so many things that I was trying to do um, and each of them I think helped um, and I had no idea that flying an airplane was going to help. It right. was just, I felt like I needed to try this thing. Now, I will tell you that when I walked back in the door after that first flight, my wife took one look at me and she said, <laughs> oh, you found your thing today, didn't you? <laughs> I, I was still, I guess, just glowing from the experience. It just lit yeah. me up and, and I just said I did. And all of the things that I mentioned, the meditation, uh, I've added breath work in there. All of that stuff continues. Like my, there are non-negotiables in my life right now. So every morning is the same. You know, I'm I'm an early riser. I'm usually up by three or four o'clock in the morning. And after having a couple of big glasses of water, um, I immediately spend between 30 and 60 minutes in meditation. Um I I have a vision board that I look at daily as part of that to remind myself of where I'm going. Um, part of that me meditation is uh, self-love practice. Part of it is gratitude. Uh, I move from there to reading and journaling. And then I go to the gym. I come back. My wife and I go for a walk. Like, there are habits now that I've put into place to protect my emotional and mental yeah. health because i know now that if that collapses everything else collapses along with it so finding something that i really enjoyed to do and that something i can use to serve others was a huge huge component of my own personal healing and i think as i boil those things down now that really if i had to define what the two biggest things were that made the biggest change one was learning to love myself yeah um, and that that was you know that that took a long time um to move through uh difficult experiences and, and learning how really what that looks like to love myself completely and unconditionally and without judgment uh, how to talk nicely to myself and then the second one was learning how to love and share love with others um including service and i think that if people can connect with those two things those two things will will be will be life-changing because they i believe now the key to success is happiness and the key to happiness is self-love and um that's what i'm trying to teach my kids now 
The Success Elevated Podcast is brought to you by SOS Navigator. SOS Navigator is an on-demand training platform geared towards marketing, personal development, and business growth. We understand that as a business owner in the service industry, you wear a million hats. Let SOS Navigator be a simple and cost-effective way for you to continue to grow your business. Click the link in the show notes below and use code SOS Podcast to get 10% off your next on-demand training course. Do you, this I think kind of leads perfectly into the conversation around like other small business owners, but how do you feel like, so you've now you've identified maybe your purpose or what, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. You've, you've, you've aligned yourself with, with a, with a cause that helps you, you know, to motivate yourself to be a better person, as well as the other things to protect your, your mental and emotional health and you're taking care of yourself. And I love the the keys to happiness, right? Like the, the key to success is happiness and the key to happiness is, you know, loving yourself, right. Or, or developing or increasing your ability yeah. to, to love yourself. Right. Um, how do you feel like identifying your purpose or identify or aligning yourself with a purpose or something that motivates you to be a better person? How do you feel like that can help a, a small business owner excel or, you know, either grow their business or um, be more successful professionally? How does identifying the, a purpose help accomplish that? Yeah. Well, I think the first step in that is identifying and getting really comfortable with who you are and what your core values are. So, yeah, you know, my core values are making a difference, adventure, leadership, relationships, autonomy, and trust. And so finding something bigger than me, like Angel Flight West, that hits all of those things, it makes a very big difference for individuals. It's adventurous. Um, I get to lead in that organization. I'm either the pilot in command of the airplane that I'm flying and leading that flight, or now I lead all 200 pilots in Arizona. Yeah. Uh, it is a very strong relationship builder, both with other pilots and with the passengers that you're carrying. It's autonomous, meaning I get to choose the level of involvement that I want. I can do a lot or I can do a little based upon the circumstances um, and there's a lot of trust that people place in me to, so those, it lights up all of my core values. So that is one of the filters. There's a lot of other wonderful charities out there yeah. that I love, um, that I support. Um, I don't dedicate as much time to them because they don't hit as many of my core values. And so identifying yeah. what is going to light you up is the first big step the second big step is then finding a mission that's bigger than you that touches those core values and and the mission just to be angel flight west is a part of the mission but you know the real mission for me is is in really in one word is i'm an edifier and what that means is i want to inspire build and lead so i want to leave every conversation that I have with someone else, every, every interaction I have with someone else, that that person feels like a better person at the end of the conversation or the end of the interaction or the end of the business deal. And that is the purpose, right? That is what I want to do. Angel Flight West is a big part in moving that personal purpose forward. Yeah. But if Angel Flight West went away, I wouldn't lose my purpose because right. I know who I am and what I want to do. So yeah. Angel Flight West is a vehicle, but it's not the vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I think that's that's the perfect way to describe it. And I love that clarification there because, um, yeah, it, it's it seems that it, outside looking in, it's like, oh, Angel Flight Flight West is Alan's purpose. Like that's that's what he wants to do. That's what he cares about. But I love the clarification that like it is the vehicle for my purpose. If if it went away and it was dissolved into some other charities or whatever, like I would still be able to accomplish my purpose because my purpose is this. It's my values are this is, and if I can accomplish these five, six things um, in a particular charity or a particular mission or whatever it is, then, then I've, you know, I've success, I've been successful in at least identifying my purpose. And I, I think that's the perfect way to do it. Do you, <clears throat> do you feel like it's more crucial for a, a, a business owner? Cause I would say a lot of businesses try to identify what their values are within the business itself, right? 
we, you know, you know, I think of like our value system here at spot on solutions. Like we have our values. We believe in big things. We're collaborative. We, um, you know, we, we try to, you know, look outside the, the box when it comes to solving problems, you know, we're creative problem solvers, all of this, like we have these, these value systems within our business here, but it, it sounds like you've identified values for you personally that are, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you're doing real estate today or tomorrow you're selling cars or the next day you're selling pizza, right? It doesn't matter. You've identified values that are specific to you personally the, the value system is that, do you feel like every small business owner should do that? And, and if they aren't doing it currently, they, they, it's something they should be doing as soon as possible. Like, do you feel like that's just should be a non-negotiable for any small business owner or any, I guess, person? Well, I think that you can have a lot of success without defining those things. And I, I did. Yeah. So I've experienced that. The difference is it was a pretty myopic. Um, I've recognized now that during those years where I had a lot of success in the business area, uh, there was a lot of success that I didn't have in my family. There was a lot of success I didn't have in the world around me. Not that I was just a total jerk in the rest of the yeah. places, but uh, without having clearly identified who I was and who I wanted to be, uh, it was easy to get stuck in doing things because that meant that I didn't need to spend a lot of time thinking about things that were bigger than just me or what I was trying to accomplish in the business world. So I think that at some point, um, the perspective that we all need to gain is how we fit into the larger fabric of our lives and the communities that we serve, the industries that we're in, and then identify who we want to be, uh, either in that context or outside of it. And I, I love what you said. Like right now, I I raise capital and do and I do real estate. That could change tomorrow, yeah. and it wouldn't change. I you know I've got on my vision board behind me who I am and where I want to go, and the vehicle can change for getting me there, but it's not going to change the destination because that's something that I work on introspectively every single day. And I share that vision. I, I went on a walk yesterday with my 17 year old son and I've, I've just rewritten my vision statement for 2024. And I shared that with him. And the reason why I shared is I want him to know what his dad is trying to become. I want him to be thinking about who he wants to be. And I want him to hold me accountable for yeah. if I'm not, making choices that are consistent with the vision that I've shared with him, then I expect him to call me out on it. Yeah. And that's, I think the only way I can call him out on his too, is we have to be um, transparent, vulnerable and sharing what our dreams and our visions are uh, for in the small business perspective. Uh, again, I think you can have a ton of success and not have identified those things. A lot of people do that. I think that success and fulfillment are two very different things. So I think you can succeed and not be fulfilled. Um, I think coupling fulfillment and success together is where really meaningful life happens. And you begin to impact lives, not just balance sheets. Oh, that's great. That's a great little quote there. I love that. that they, they are totally, I fully agree with you that success and fulfillment are two very different things. And and I would, uh, I mean, there are a lot of people in the world that are very successful. You look at millionaires and billionaires all the time that, man, they're really successful. I, I don't know if uh, they have the best value system in place or, and I don't know if they're really concerned with what their purpose is or what their mission is or what they're trying to accomplish when it comes to the world or themselves or bettering themselves. I, I, and so I think, yeah, success is different than fulfillment. And I love that there's, you know, kind of some differences there. Um, so let's, let's kind of, let's get down to maybe kind of the, how someone would accomplish this. How are there some resources that you leaned on when it came to identifying your value system or your purpose, or, you know, if there's a small business owner out there or may, and maybe not necessarily a small business owner, but just someone listening to this podcast, that's like, Hey, I want to better identify what my personal values are and better identify what my purpose is. 
where, what, what can they do or where, where should they go to maybe get some resources to kind of help them identify that for themselves? Yeah. So, you know, and I, I probably can send this to you and you can include it in the show notes. I found yeah. a worksheet online that was a very, it started with a bunch of words that you went, you're supposed to go through and circle and see what identifies. And then it helps you to funnel that down. Um, the way that I did that, and I don't know if this is the right or wrong way, but I, I tried to look at time periods in my life when I felt really happy and oh, yeah. find words that things that were happening, situations that I am, think that I was in, things that I was doing during those periods of happiness and find words that associated with that. And so as I looked at two or three or four different time periods, I could find some common themes of things that were happening. I was making a difference in the world. I was doing something adventurous. I was leading other people. I was developing relationships. I had autonomy. I was, I received an extended trust. So that is how I was able to boil that down. Um, there's a bunch of worksheets online that can help with that process. So that would be one thing. Um, before that, or maybe as part of that. So I'll just throw some things out. There's not really any great order. So I read um, Hal Elrod's book, The Miracle Morning Millionaire, or The Miracle Morning. And he identifies some very specific habits that everyone can do every single morning, no matter how much time that you have, that will help scientifically to raise the level of happiness that you have in your life. So I would suggest identifying, implementing routines, habits, actions that help to raise the minimum level of happiness in your life every single day. That's why I do the things that I do is I want to be happy. So I do those things. Um, the other thing would be a network. One of the biggest things that was missing for me personally for the first 20 years of my career is I didn't have a network of peers of other people that were doing similar things to me yeah. that I could counsel with and consult with. And that's in uh, 2022, I joined a mastermind group that has completely changed my life in every area. In fact, as I was uh, the morning of uh, Thanksgiving, I was writing down people that I wanted to send a quick message to, to thank them for the impact they had on my life. And of those people that were on the list, probably 90% of them were people that came from this network group. And so the influence that they've had on me personally, professionally, mentally, emotionally, financially, in my relationships and my physical health has been transformative in every way. So personal habits, finding a network of people that are doing things that, that are already where you want to go. So put yourself in a room of people that are where you want to go and connect with those people. Um, and then I think, you know, finding a cause bigger than yourself and regularly yeah. dedicating time to that would be one of the third things that I would recommend. Yeah, uh, and maybe one of the easiest things is just clearly defining what does happiness look like for you. You know, um, I am happy when and write those things down, and then identify in your life are are you currently doing the things that bring happiness into your life, and if not, what do you need to stop doing, and what do you need to start doing to do that? So at the end of the day, you can be really successful and really unhappy, and for me, that's just that's not the way I want to live. I I want to lead with happiness and joy. And I feel like that will lead to greater success and fulfillment and outreach and making a difference than anything else. It's awesome. Alan, thank you. That was, that was kind of the the perfect way I think to kind of close up this topic is yeah. The, 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 the way that uh, uh, any person or any individual can kind of break down these topics and look for ways to kind of better develop some of these things in themselves, I think is huge. And so thank you for kind of providing some of those resources. And again, thank you for all of your insight into your life today. I, I find what you've done and what you've built is, is fascinating and um, kind of better identifying who you are as an individual, I think will only better help people in the future. And if you can, you know, look internally, I, I feel like, um, 
people, the world would be a better place <laughs> if, uh, and I, and I feel like this, this is kind of two sides of the same coin, but I feel like the world would be a better place if we would look for ways to kind of better help others. And I think the first step to do that is to look internally and to be like, okay, how can I be a better person? What do I have to do to accomplish this? And yeah, looking at some things that like, I'm happiest when I'm doing this. Um, I feel the best when I'm, uh, you know, working on these types of tasks or when I'm helping myself grow. All of those things um, can help you be a better person. And if you become a better person, you're going to be able to help others. And, and I think that's a huge piece that is missed in today's world. And so um, maybe in our small corner here with the podcast and with having conversations with awesome people like you, maybe we can maybe, you know, help the world be a better place. And so anyways, Alan, thank you again for your insights today. I want to close up the podcast. If you don't mind asking the same questions that we ask all of our guests, um, we've had some awesome answers to these questions. And so we keep asking everybody, everybody that's new that we bring onto the podcast, we, we close it up with asking these three questions. First and foremost, um, favorite book or podcast that you're reading to that you're reading right now, or that you've read or listened to recently. Um, favorite book would be hard. I read a lot. Uh, most impactful book this year for me has been a book called yes, yes, hell no. Okay. Uh, wasn't something I ever heard about before, but yeah. that has been a really powerful, uh, impactful book, uh, helping me, uh, how to have a better, I guess, understanding better decision-making and, um, also a better relationship, both with inspiration, with reason and, and with fear. Uh, excellent book. Podcasts, uh, I love the uh, Ed Milet. I, I listen to yeah, that regularly. He's awesome. I love the inspiration and perspective that he provides, the guests that he has on. Um, those I would say are the the top ones right now. Love it. Those are two great recommendations. And and Ed Milet, yeah, is is one that we've had multiple people recommend on the show. And in fact, I've started listening to him based on recommendations from the podcast. And yeah, he's he's awesome. Um Second question, you wear a lot of hats and you've got a lot going on in your life, obviously, both professionally and personally. And I'm sure it's it's hard to stay on top of everything all at once. But how do you recharge your mental and emotional batteries at the end of a long day? Well, I think for me, it actually happens the other way. It happens in the morning. So Mornings, my morning routine, yeah. which I already talked about, um, and if... If there is, if I've reached a point where I need a little bit more than flying my airplane is certainly a, a quick injection of happiness at the end of any day for me. So, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, that's a great way to look at it. Um, looking at it in reverse, you can have better days and maybe not be so emotionally and mentally drained if you start off on the right foot. So I love that. I love that's, we've had a couple people recommend that. Yeah. Having a great start to the day. We've had people recommend, um, maybe even taking kind of a midday break is a great way to do it. And so it's not always at the end of the day that you recharge. Sometimes it's how you start the day. that really makes a difference. So I love that. Um, last question, Alan. And again, thank you so much for your, your time today and, and being able to pick your brain a little bit, but, um, if you could rewind to the beginning of your career. So if you could rewind to the, maybe the first business that you owned or younger than that, however you want to do it, if you could rewind to the beginning and tell younger Alan one thing, what would that one thing be? Well, that's a great question. And I think what it would, really what it would be, would be just what I talked about, what I feel like success formulas are, is number one, learn to love yourself. Number two, find a network and connect with that network. And then number three, don't forget to live. Um not just doing the thing, building the business, but identify what makes you happy and spend some time doing that thing, being with that person, enjoying that activity. Uh, not that I didn't have happiness during that period, but I certainly wasn't very intentional. And maybe all of that stuff could be wrapped up just in that is be a little bit more intentional about life, not just business. Oh, that's perfect. Alan. That was a great way to kind of close up our podcast. And again, 
thank you so much for coming on today. Um, we really appreciate all of your insights into your life and into your businesses. And this just was a, a really, I think, important podcast for our guests to listen to. And I know they're going to get a, a ton of value out of it. So again, thanks again for coming on and we hope to talk to you more in the future. Hayden, thank you. I'm looking forward to future, further conversations and relationship with you. Thanks, Alan. This has been Success Elevated, making you a little bit better one show at a time. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe on YouTube or any other major podcast platform to listen to more episodes. We are proudly brought to you by Spot On Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help you grow your business, please check us out at spotonsolutions.com.